In this video, I'll go over Western. I've been using it for the last couple days. A lot of you in the video comments, and I mean a lot, told me in the past that I should use Western or that I should give it a try. I was pretty happy with Kitty, but I finally decided to give it a go. Let's see what I think about it. At the end of the video, I'll let you know which terminal emulator I'm gonna keep using as of now. Some of you may already know, but I started with iTerm, then moved to Alacrity. If you wanna find out more on why I did that, here is the video. I'm going to leave that in the video description. After trying Alacrity for a few months, I loved it, but it didn't support images. So I decided to switch to Kitty. I created this other video. I'm also going to leave that video in the video description. And I was pretty happy with Kitty. I could see images in any of them. So I didn't have the need to move to a different terminal emulator. But everyone seemed to love Western. And since I use any of them so much, it seems that their configurations match because both of them are managed in Lua. So I just decided to give it a try. One of the reasons that I hadn't switched to Western is because images were not supported, but I was wrong. Some of you in the comments told me that yes, they were supported but I never gave that a try. My apologies, you guys were right. Images are supported. I'm in this markdown file, as you can see right now. I have a couple images down here. So if I scroll over each one of them, it renders the images perfectly. Let me keep scrolling down because I have more images here. I can see them without any issues. If I keep scrolling down, I have more images. Even this one with the white background. Here's another one. And I can also load images from a URL. Notice on the right hand side, this is a URL. I'm not sure what protocol it's using in the background to render the images. I don't know how to specify that in the configuration. It supports the Kitty image protocol in theory. So maybe that's how it's loading them. Not sure, but it works out of the box without me doing anything. If you want to know how I view images and how I paste them in different formats in Neovim, I have a video for that. You will be able to find it in the video description, but you can also find it in my YouTube channel is the one that is highlighted here. View and paste images in Neovim like in Obsidian. So just follow the instructions in that video, but instead of installing Kitty, you can install Western and it's just going to work. Another thing that I love about Western is that it also supports undercurl for spelling issues. If I scroll down here to the bottom of the file, you'll notice that I have my spell settings to English and I have some Spanish words here at the bottom. You may not see it because the font is too small, but I have the undercurl. Let me switch my spelling to both languages, English and Spanish, leader, M, S, L, B as in both languages, and the uh, misspellings are gone. I just have a misspelling here. I'm just going to fix it. Leader, M, S, S. That's the key map that I configured. So as you were able to tell, undercurl works just fine. I'll let you know how to enable it in a little while when we go over the Western configuration. Also, if you want to know how I set up spelling in multiple languages, I released this video yesterday. It's the one highlighted on the screen right now. And I just go over the setup, the key maps and everything you need to know if you use more than one language in any of them. The next thing that I love about Western is the way that the fonts are rendered. They actually look quite nicer compared to Kitty. The fonts that I have configured right now is JetBrains Mono. I have that same font configured in Kitty, but it doesn't pick it up and I'm not sure why. I'm tired of trying to set it up anyway. Let me show you my Kitty config file. So here is where I set the font family, but Kitty for a strange reason is not picking it up. I'm going to open the exact same file in both terminal emulators so you can see the difference. So this is JetBrains Mono in Western and the fonts do render properly. Notice the zero, it has a dot in the middle and notice the rest of the fonts. Now I'm going to switch back to Kitty and I'm going to open the exact same file and notice here that the zero is different. The font is different. It looks a little bit more squashed, but I had to play a few tricks in Kitty for the fonts to show up properly. If I switch to the Kitty config file, you'll be able to see that I had to set the font cell width to 95% because it was more spaced compared to my Alacrity's font back then. And I also had to change the cell height for the font because it seemed smaller. But overall, I didn't have a good experience with fonts and Kitty. Maybe I just didn't set up the configuration correctly here. Not sure. I tried multiple different ways, but I never got it to work properly. So overall, the fonts look better for me in Western compared to Kitty. Let me switch between Kitty and Western so you can see the difference. I'm in Western here. Now I'm in Kitty. Even though the font is different, you can see that in Western, the font looks sharper. Let me switch back here again. Western, Kitty again, Western, and I'm in Kitty one more time and back in Western. I don't know that Western has its own multiplexer offering. I tried it to all my Western fans out there that are going to get disappointed. When you see that I'm using Tmux in Western, I had no choice. My workflow depends on Tmux so much. Let me show you my Tmux configuration file real quick. And the main thing that I use Tmux for is sessions. If you scroll down here, you're going to notice that I have the Tmux sessionizer script. This other one that I created, I also created this and um, I use these to manage all my different sessions. Notice that I have a lot of different key maps here 
lot of different bindings so that I can jump to my different sessions with a single key map. If I press hyper T U, I'm going to switch to the Obsidian repo or the session. If I list my sessions here, you're going to see that I have different sessions open so I can switch between sessions really easily. I know that Western has a session navigator similar to this, but it was not going to be easy to implement all these and to reproduce my entire configuration. Notice that I do have a lot of these. So I just decided to install Tmux and not complicate myself. If you want to know how I jump between different Tmux sessions and how I use the Tmux sessionizer script, I have this video in which I go over stuff in detail. Another thing that I love about Western is the logo and the name of the terminal emulator. I never really liked Kitty's logo and its name, but it doesn't matter in the end. The terminal emulator could have any name. I don't really care. As long as it performs better, I would pick it. There is one thing that I prefer about Kitty compared to Western. I'm going to open the Western configuration file. Here it is, Western.lua. I'm going to open the same file in Kitty. I have it here in Kitty. And I'm going to scroll down in both terminals. And you're going to see that Kitty runs a little bit smoother, at least on my side. I'm running Mac OS. So if you know there's a setting that I can change for the scrolling to see smoother, let me know down in the comments. But I'm going to scroll down in the document right now. You can see I'm scrolling down and I see a bit of um, a lag or a delay when I'm scrolling. It's not as smooth as Kitty. You know, the difference is not too much. To be honest, I can live with it. I don't have an issue, but I'm just scrolling down here so you can see how it looks in Western. Scrolling up and down on the screen. So now I'm going to switch to Kitty so you can see the difference there. I'm in Kitty here. Let me scroll up and I scroll down right now. As you can tell, it looks a little bit smoother when I'm scrolling down in the file. I'm scrolling up right now. Maybe when I scroll up, it doesn't look that smooth. But if I scroll down, notice that it looks a little bit nicer. Like I said, the difference is not too much. It doesn't bother me too much and I can live with that. I use the Stay Center plugin. Let me disable it. See if that makes a difference. Leader U S capital S. I toggled Stay Center. Let's see if I scroll up. If I scroll down, I still see the same, the same thing. It still behaves the same. I'm gonna re-enable it. Leader U capital S because I like my cursor to be always in the middle of the screen. Some of you might say that it's because of Tmux because I'm running Tmux inside Western, but that's not the case. I noticed this small lag even before I set up Tmux in Western. And if you notice back in Kitty, I'm also running Tmux in here. So that's the main thing or the main difference between Kitty and Western, at least on my side. But if you know some settings or if you know any tricks to make it scroll smoother, let me know down in the comments. Since Western is a Rust based terminal emulator, I was expecting it to be something more like Neovide. Here I'm in Neovide. Notice at the top here we see Neovide. Neovide is a Rust based NeoVim GUI. But notice how this thing scrolls up and down. Notice that it's way smoother, even smoother than Kitty. I'm scrolling up here. I'm scrolling down. I have some cursor animation enabled in Neovide right now. So that's why you see the cursor behaving that way. So Honestly, since both are written in Rust, I was hoping for Western to behave this exact same way. That was not the case. So just something that you can keep in mind or consider as well. If you don't know what Neovite is, I have a video. You can see that is the video highlighted here on the screen. Neovim or Neovite, what is the difference? I go over how to install and set up Neovite and everything you need to know about it. I'm going to leave it in the video description as well. Okay, so those are my main takeaways for Western. If there are other things that you love about Western or Kitty, leave them down in the comments so all of us as a community can learn new tips and tricks. Now I'm going to show you how I configured Western. Here is the configuration file, western.lua. I have this file in my dot .files, dot .files latest, western, western.lua. Let me open my dot .files real quick. I'm going to search for Western here in the search box, western.lua. If I open this file, you'll be able to see that is the exact same thing that we will go over in the video right now. I'm going to leave a link to my dot .files in the video description in case that you want to grab this, copy and paste it in your Western config. If you like my dot .files, make sure to start the repo here on the main page. The configuration that I have here, this was pulled from the documentation, nothing fancy there. This config builder section was also pulled from there. This is something custom that I have to load the colors from my existing colors.lua file. What do I mean by this? I'm going to press hyper CN on my keyboard. This is going to bring this color scheme selector that I created 
activate it. I'm going to switch my color scheme to dark poutine. Just going to select this here. Notice that the colors changed on sketchy bar at the top. They also changed in Tmux. I'm going to quit NeoVim right now. Notice that the colors also changed in my Starship prompt. If I run NeoFetch, you'll be able to see these new colors. I'm going to reopen NeoVim and the colors were also applied here in NeoVim. Notice that Western does not have the colors applied yet. I'm just going to quit Western. Notice that the border here on the background is different. So I'm just going to quit Western and I'm going to reopen it. I do that in my specific case with Hyper AJ and notice that now Western has these colors applied as well. If I go out of here and I run an LL command to list all my files, it picked up the colors. So what is this Hyper CN key map that I was talking about? It's just a color scheme selector that I created. I'm going to switch back to my colors, which is this profile. Just going to hit enter here. That is going to switch everything again. Notice that Western still does not have the colors. I'm just going to quit Western and I'm going to bring it up. Now Western picked up the colors and I reopen new of them and I'm back in my custom color scheme. So if you want to know how I set this up, go and watch this video, color scheme selector. I explain everything in detail there. I will reorganize the scripts that I use. So expect to see some changes in the near future there. This color scheme selector applies for both Mac OS and Linux because it's basically shell scripts. So it's not OS dependent. Of course, in Linux, you don't have sketchy bar, so you'll need to apply the colors to your menu bar. But following this video, you'll know how. So if you're not using my colors, just make sure you comment this line because you're going to get some warnings in here because this colors.lua file is not going to exist. This is just from the default configuration from the document here is where I applied my config choices. First of all, and really important, I set the term variable to West term. I left a comment here so you can understand why I did this. And this is what allows under Chrome support. Before you can set this, you need to install a copy of the West term term definition. If I go here to this link, just going to press GX and new them. It's going to take me there. So the only thing I did is just grab this, copy it, went back to my terminal, pasted it here in my terminal. That's it. Then if you're using Tmux, make sure that you add this line to your Tmux configuration file because that is going to set the terminal to this inside Tmux. Let me show you my Tmux configuration file again so you can see that. Here it is. Let me search for a term here and it's at the top of the file. Let me scroll down here a little bit. Here it is. This is the line that you need to add. When inside NeoVim, run a check health command and under Tmux, you will see that the term is set to West term. This is really important too. Let me run the command so you can see here, check health, and I'm going to search for Tmux here. Term is set to West term. You will get this error, but don't worry about it. Just ignore it. As long as you see this term West term, you should be fine. If you don't see the term set to West term in NeoVim, but it's still set to your old term, make sure that you reload your Tmux configuration first, then Close all your Tmux sessions, then quit the terminal and reopen it. And that should do it. This is something else that I configured when I execute Western. I always wanted to run Tmux. I have something similar configured in Kitty. Here is my Kitty config file. And if we scroll down here, you'll notice that this command also checks if Tmux is installed. If it's installed, it attaches to an existing session. If no session exists, a new one is created. But if Tmux is not installed, it's just going to start CSH without Tmux. And I'm just doing the same thing here. Whenever I open my terminal, I always want Tmux to take over because that's the way that I manage my stuff that I navigate between sessions. If, for example, you want to change the color scheme, you can do that here. I don't use an existing color scheme. I set up my own and you'll see how I apply the settings below. This removes the macOS menu bar at the top, the one that has the three buttons. I don't need it. Looks nicer without that bar at the top. Here is where I configure the font, JetBrains Mono. You can set it to bold if you want. And here's where you set the font size as well. Enable the top bar. I don't use tabs. If you want to know why I have this video, I'm also going to leave it in the video description. The window close confirmation. When you exit Western, it always asks you if you're sure or not. So you have to press Y. I use Tmux, so I don't care. If I quit Western, I just wanted to exit immediately. And if I reopen it again, Tmux is going to pick up all my sessions and I'm just going to go back to where I was. So I just disable this. The blinking is um, configured here. You can switch this from constant to linear and it looks different. Linear means that it's going to have a fade in effect between blinks. I didn't like that too much. I prefer it to blink constantly. And to be honest, I'm not sure why it's not blinking right now. Let me switch this to a thousand. Let me copy this. Let me paste it here. Let's see what happens if I switch it to linear. 
and I'm not sure why the cursor stopped blinking because it was blinking. Maybe because I switched my term variable to West term. Not sure, but I'm going to check on that later. Let me just undo all these changes and we're back to my defaults. I also configured some window padding, which is what you see here on the left and on the right hand side. Also, this one at the top is the little gap that you see here between the Tmux bar and the top of the terminal. I don't like having it at the bottom, so I just set it to zero. Even though I set the bottom padding to zero, you still see a gap here. Not sure why. Don't really care, to be honest. So I just leave it there. Here's where I set the colors. If you're using an existing color scheme, just make sure that you comment this entire color section. Just gonna select a whole thing, this, because this is not needed. Or if you want to use custom colors, you can specify the hex color in here. So replace this entire thing with a hex color. I load them from variables because I have my color scheme settings being applied. If you want to customize your color scheme, just replace all of these variables that you see here, what is highlighted on the screen with hex colors. And I got all of these from the documentation. Basically just copy it and paste from the docs. I have more colors here, same thing. I'll keep scrolling down. And that's everything that I have for my Western configuration. The documentation is wonderful. It's really easy to follow. It's really well organized. You can search for stuff. I love the documentation and I love the fact that this is Lua because I do a lot of NeoVim configuration, a lot of key maps in Lua as opposed to Kitty, which has its Kitty config file. As you can see here, this is not nice to manage configuration. Syntax highlighting is basically non-existing. Auto formatting does not exist here as well. So managing the configuration in Lua works really Really well for me and I appreciate that. If we compare Kitty's configuration file with something like iTerm, for example, I prefer Kitty a thousand times because having this at least is better than having nothing at all. So what is my verdict on this? What am I going to use from now on? Due to the fact that I can view images in Western and my fonts look better, I'll definitely stick to Western for now. There is another terminal emulator called Ghosty. I'm trying to join the beta for that terminal emulator because I wanted to give it a try and I want to compare its performance with Western. I basically want to see if scrolling is smoother compared to Western, but I have not been invited to the beta yet, so I'm waiting. I think I'll have to wait until it's publicly released, which I think is by the end of this year. We'll see. Something that I forgot to mention is that you can set a background image. I don't use that feature at the moment, but it's something that you can have available. You can also set it transparent and show that image in the background. The way that I'm handling transparency in Western at the moment is using my window manager, which is Yabai. I have a video for that as well. It's this one shown here, transparent terminal with Yabai in macOS. This allows me to set transparency not only in my terminal, but also in my browser, for example, or in Spotify or in any other app. You want to know how to do that? I explain everything in detail in that video as well. Quite a bit old, the quality is not the best, but its content is still good. I think I covered everything Western related in this video. If you have any other tips, tricks, configuration options that I should give a try, let me know down in the comments and also let me know your thoughts and what your favorite terminal emulator is and why. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next